Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, I am working on today a new gib for a Monarch lathe that I've been working on restoring. And the gib that I had previously, after making some changes to the machine, adding some turkite, doing some milling, doing some scraping, uh, it was now a little bit too thin. I wasn't able to get it in there. So to get around that, what we've done is we've actually machined a new tapered gib. If you look, this thing is kind of a trapezoidal shape. It goes in at an angle. Uh, and basically, uh, it it's it's, goes in that dovetail fixture, but it's, it's a wedge. It is, it is an angle all the way from one side to the other. So it's fairly complicated geometry. After getting it off the milling machine, though, we want to do some precision grinding on it to actually get it to fit perfectly, make a little, couple of little adjustments and some angles and some dimensions, and uh, get a nice finish on it as well. And to do that, we're going to be over here on the surface grinder. So let's get over here and get this job done. Before we do anything, we want to go ahead and, and redress this wheel. So anytime you're working on a surface grinder, you want to make sure you dress this wheel from time to time. Uh, because as you're using it, this wheel, wheel is going to actually degrade. It's going to actually uh, start losing some material on there. And we want a nice, smooth finish on there that's perfectly parallel to the work that we're doing. And to do that, of course, we just use a little diamond piece here. And I'm just going to mag that down. I turn my magnetic chuck on. That is firmly affixed here. And uh, we'll go ahead and fire the spindle up. I just changed this wheel out. So just by changing it out, it may not be running perfectly true up and down. You get some skipping going on. So we wanna make sure we get a nice fresh grind on here and also that it's perfectly flat and parallel across the, the table here. So as always, when I'm working on a, with a diamond here, what I wanna do is make sure that I'm a little bit forward of center. The wheel is rotating in this direction. So I want the pressure coming out and away from the, the, the diamond. And uh, we're just gonna lower that down. I'm gonna put my hand out here and actually can feel when some grit starts coming off of that diamond. I know that we're touching. All right, I'm touching right there. And now we'll just kind of go back and forth across it. I'm listening to the wheel as it's uh, making contact there. And I noticed it was kind of making a little chattering noise, which tells me again that that wheel's not running perfectly true. So I'm gonna reach up here. I'm going to lower it down a couple of thousandths of an inch. We'll cut back across. I still hear that skipping sound, so we're going to take a little bit more. Real close. Probably just a few more thou, and I think we'll probably have it. Yeah, we got it that time. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and Shut that spindle down. I'm going to remove the, the diamond from the mag chuck here. And now I want to wipe this down, make sure we got a nice clean surface. I'm going to grab the gib here that we're going to be working on. Again, you see this is kind of a trapezoidal shape here. It's kind of a diamond shape. And uh, the first thing I want to do, well, first off, let's talk about it a little bit. So in this direction, this height, it stays constant from one end to the other. However, in this direction, we have a wedge. It's tapered. So we're going to have to do a little bit set different setup on this to grind this. But before I do anything else, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that these two planes here, the one on this side and the one opposite, are parallel to one another. Uh, we did it over on the milling machine, so it's probably not just perfect. It's probably very close, but not perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to mag that down. It is firmly attached. Yes, it is leaning a little bit backwards, but the magnetic forces are going to pull that down the plate. And what we're going to do is we're just going to basically take enough off of this to get it cleaned up. That's all I'm trying to do here is just clean it up. So let's uh, fire things back up. So to get this uh, wheel down close to it, what I'm gonna do is just come in here and we're just gonna come down using my coarse feed until I just feel it starting to catch right there. And that should have me within a couple of thousandths. Usually a piece of paper is about two to three thousandths thick, just depending on the paper. Uh, but now I'm not gonna worry about having to crash it down in there. I'm gonna go ahead and fire this thing up. I am gonna just kind of go back and forth all right, see, I'm touching on this end. So that tells me that I got a little bit high end on one side or the other. 
I always like to do this when I'm starting off because I don't want to crash my wheel. If I touch off down here and it's 10 thousandths higher in the back and I just jam it forward, I'm feeding too much material in there. So you never know what you're starting with, but that gets me to a start there. So what I'm going to do now is uh, turn a little cooling on. I'm just going to feed down probably about a thou and a half. And I'm going to engage the auto feed. And we will let it run across there. I'm going to feed down another thou. I don't really know how much I'm going to have to take out of this. But uh, we'll start there. Let it feed back across. Now let's cut back across it now. I fed down about another thousandth. It's looking like we were high on this end, a little bit less on the other side. Don't know by how much. But we're going to take all that out of there. taking about nine thousandths total out of here right now and I'm taking another thousand we almost cleaned up on that last pass let's see if this one gets it happy what we got. We got one little teeny tiny area up here in the very front that's not quite touching. I'm going to leave it in there because this gib is a little bit too long. I'm going to have to cut it to length anyway, so more than likely we're going to be cutting that out. So um, go ahead and shut this off. Take my part out. You see we got a nice finish on there. Very happy with that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put our freshly ground side down. Make sure I get all the chips and dust off of it. All right, we will put that down and uh, mag it into place. Now, in theory, I shouldn't have to change my wheel because uh, it's the same thickness we were a minute ago. We just flipped the part over. So let's go ahead and fire back up. And just to confirm that, I'm just going to run over it. I'm seeing a few little light sparks here or there. So it shouldn't take much to clean this side up. I'm just going to feed it down about a half a thou. May have to come back across that, but that's all right.
All right, it's, it's touching here, 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 and here, but there's a couple of gaps in here where it's not quite touching, so we'll take another half foul and come back across that. Like it's gonna clean on up. I see what it looks like here. Yeah. So guys, here's the challenge we got now. I've got my original gib here. This is my new gib that we have made, and we need to grind this angle on here. We need a very precision angle to match what is needed. And I've got my original gib here, and so what we got to do is we got to figure out what is the angle of this right here. And we're gonna use some uh, mathematics here in a minute to figure that out. Once we get that figured out, we need to transfer that angle over to this sign plate. Now this sign plate, this is a compound sign plate. It actually goes in two directions, but we're only gonna use it in one direction today. And basically it's things on a hinge. So there's a hinge right here in this pivot. You know, it's got a round little section there. And it all goes back and forth and basically comes down. Up here in the front, we got another round boss, okay? It's important that that's round. It's not rectangular or square. It don't have a corner on it. So I know that the distance between the center of this round disc and the center of this round uh, disc over here is exactly 10 inches, okay? So what I've got to do, what my challenge is, what I'm trying to get to is I need to know how much distance I need to put inside of this area over here to make the angle match whatever angle we come up here so that this is now basically flat so that we can grind it if you follow where I'm going. So again, two things we gotta calculate. Number one, we gotta figure out what this angle is from here to here, this angle here. And then we have to figure out what stack we need to put up underneath this to get that same angle. So with that, let's start doing some math. So let's figure out what we got. We got the gib here, okay? I'm gonna make some measurements. First thing I wanna know is how long is this gib? So I'm gonna measure this. I've got a pair of uh, 12 inch calipers here and we'll come in here. All right, we're gonna call that 10.39 inches, 10.39. So I'm gonna draw this out so you can see it a little bit better. We've got 10.390 inches. That's the length, okay? On uh, the short side over here, I'm gonna take my, my calipers again. We'll measure this on the very end. And I'm measuring 0 0.202. 0 0.202, okay? On the other end, we'll measure this one. And on this end, we are measuring 0 0.418. 0 0.418. And then we have a nice angle that goes down through there like such. All right, so we're gonna go over here to the whiteboard now so you can see this a little bit better. But that is basically the dimensions of our gib. And so what I want to do now is turn this into a right triangle so that I can do some trigonometry functions on it. So we're going to basically draw a triangle. I want this to go down to a sharp point. So I basically want to subtract out the point 202 from the point 418. So let's do, do math here. It'll be 6, 1, 2, 0.216. 216 inches here. We want to come up with the angle here. That's going to be our what we're solving for. And again, 10.39. So if you remember from basic geometry, remember the, the sine, cosine, and tangent functions? What we're going to do is find the opposite side over the adjacent side. We got these two values. So that is the tan. So uh, the tangent of x of this angle equals opposite 0.216 over the adjacent, which is 10.390, okay? 
Now we need to get our tangent over on this side. So we're just solving for x. So x equals the inverse of tangent times 0.216 over 10.390. That's what we're solving for. Now to do that, we're going to use our calculator. And for calculator, I'm just going to use my phone, my iPhone here. And a little trick, if you pull up the calculator app on your iPhone and you turn it sideways, it turns into a scientific calculator. So let's figure this out. We're going to do our math, 0.216 divided by, it's over 10.390 gives us a number. Okay, we want to do the inverse tangent of that number. Now we have tangent here, but we need the inverse of that. So we hit the second function. You notice our tangent number turns into to inverse. We hit that and that is our angle. 1.19096, I'm gonna round that to four digits. So it's gonna be 1.1910. X equals 1.1. 910 degrees. All right, so now we know what the angle is. So to solve for this, let's see what we got. We know our angle, we know our hypotenuse, we're going for the uh, opposite side. So uh, opposite over the hypotenuse, that's going to be the sine function. So sine of x equals opposite over hypotenuse, right? So we know some things here. Let's uh, sine of 1.1910 equals opposite is unknown, x over 10. Uh, we need to get our x over here by itself, so we'll do sine of 1.1910 times 10 equals x. Okay, let's get our calculator out. Again, we'll go over to the scientific function. We're not going to use the inverse this time, so let me, there we go, take that off. So we're going to do 1.1910, take the sine function of that, multiply it times 10. 0.2078. So that is the height of our stack that we need to put in there. And with, we'll use gauge blocks, we'll come up with the stack. Now one thing I will say is that on that particular sign plate, because if you look in the back it kind of drops down like this and you put your stack in here and that's what sits on top of it. I know this is a hundred thousandths deeper, so we need to add a hundred thousandths to that, which will, so, 0 0.3078. That's the size stack we need to go on our sign plate. So let's go get our sign plate set up and let's uh, verify that we're getting the right numbers here. All right, so let's get our stack. So we are going for 0 0.3078. Okay, now I'm going to start, since we got one that goes to the 10 thousandths, this top row up here starts at point 1001, 1002, so basically these are your 10 thousandths. I'm going to grab the point 1008, so minus point 1008, that's going to be 0702, so I still got 207 thousandths to go. So I'm going to grab this one here. This one is 107 thousandths thick. So 0.107. And we'll subtract that out. Zero, one. So we got into 100 thousandths. I'll grab my 100 thousandths uh, stack right here. And when we put these three gauge blocks together, we should have 0 0.3078. And, um, you know, to get this exactly right, I would need to go grab my uh, micrometers, but just to get a quick look here, you know, we're going to measure it with the calipers, and we, yeah, we're right over 
you know, we're right there around that number. So I'm good. 3078. So it's a little over 0 0.307. And again, these are not accurate enough to give me an exact reading, but I like to verify that I'm where I say I am. So we're going to take this stack and we're going to go put it in the sign plate now. Tilt this up. We'll take our stack, put it down up underneath it. We'll drop that roll right back down on top of it. And now that angle across the top should be just right. And we're going to verify that with an indicator. What I've got here is a half thousandths indicator. And what I want to do is just verify now that this uh, top surface should be flat, at least at the ends. Now, I'm not going to say this is perfectly flat. This is an old gib. It may be bent a little bit in the middle or something like that. But what's important is, is that because we are measuring on one end to the other, that those numbers are the same. So let's uh, roll across here. And you know, we're dropping down about two thousandths, two and a half. And now it's rising back up and get to the end and we're back to zero. So, okay, we got something funky going on here with the surface in here, that, but I can deal with that. What I, what I have verified is that the angle is, is uh, you know, what we put in there. And we're going to, I'm not worried about this gib. We're not going to do anything with this gib. I'm just using this for verification purposes. just had at least a little bit right there, but that's close enough for what I'm working on right now. We're going to have to grind a good bit more off of this, so I'll worry about cleaning that face up completely here in a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and get this turned over. And grind the bottom side. Be right where we want to be. Yeah, it's just barely fuzzing across there. I'm going to take it down a thousand. And come across this side. Take it over the lathe and we'll do a test fit. So I want to do a test fit again over here. I've got my gib. I'm going to go ahead and slide it in. I'm going to pull this back until it's nice and tight back here. And I want to see how much deflection we have on this side to see if that angle needs to be changed. So I'm going to put an indicator on here. Zero that out. And what I can do now is just come over here and push on it. And it looks like it's out, I don't know, that's between two and three thousandths. Before I was able to get three and a half thousandths of feeler stock in on the back side of this. So we're down to about three thousandths, which tells me that my angle that we ground is just right. Now, what I want to do is, um, you know, three thousandths, yeah, we could scrape that out but three thousandths is a mile when you're scraping. So I think what I'm going to do is change my angle on the sign plate slightly so that I'm taking about three thousandths more. I want to do, want to do is zero it on this end and be taking three thousandths more off of this end. So I want this end to be three thousandths thinner than this end. Okay, and that will should change that angle ever so slightly and uh, get us in there. So I'm going to do some math, recalculate my stack, and then we'll go over there with the indicator and verify that we're right. And then hopefully we can start grinding this in and get it where it needs to be.
So we've got it set up over here with the indicator again. We changed our stack slightly uh, to hopefully get us where we're taking three more thousandths out of this. So again, what we're after is we want this side to be three thousandths thinner than this side or the, or the opposite of that, this side to be three thousandths thicker than that one. Same thing, uh, since I'm zeroed over here, I want to read plus three when I get down to the end of here or somewhere really close to it. So let's uh, roll on down here and, or excuse me, I want to be minus three is where I want to be on this end. And we're at about minus three and a half. So with three thousandths thinner. And just going back and forth, we're losing, yeah, we're probably off just a little bit. It's going to be pretty darn close. Within a half a thou, I think, is going to be where we end up on this. Uh, and I can easily scrape that out. And truth of the matter is, we're going to be cutting some length off of this. And when you get back a little bit, because it's a taper over a long area, you know, when you get in there, it's about 3,000. So I think we'll be fine. So let's bring our grinder in there and we will go ahead and cut this down, get another angle cleaned up all the way across, and then take it back over there and do another test fit. I didn't show it over there on the lathe, but I did take it over just like we did before. We did a test fit and guys, it is fitting just snug as a glove. I mean, it fits just about as perfect. I could not detect hardly any movement in there at all. So uh, we're gonna go with this angle. I think we got it right where it is and it pretty much matches within a half a thou of what I had measured uh, beforehand, before with the old gib. So uh, I think we're good. Now what I gotta do is we gotta make this gib a fair amount thinner uh, just to get it to fit all the way in. It's a little bit too thick right now. We're all right across our uh, the trapezoidal point uh, corners on this so from this face to the other face. We're good, but we do need to take it down. I don't know exactly how far. We're just, this is going to be a, uh, some trial and error going back and forth to the lathe and test fitting it. So let's just get in here. I'm going to take about 10 thou off of it just to kind of gauge myself as to where I need to be. So we'll probably take about a thou and a half per pass. I'm at four and a half, so I want to get to 14 and a half on my, on my scale up here. I've ground about, what is it, 25 thou total off of the thickness of this from when we started in this direction or on these faces here. And I'm gonna slide my gib in. Remember this gib is long. Right now, the gib is just about flush with the outside over here. And actually it's gotta be in on either side. So it's a, I'm gonna have to cut some off of both sides, but I wanted to kind of get an idea of where it was at. I'm gonna lock that in place. So this is basically tight on this side. You know, I didn't jam it too hard, but you know, we snugged it in there. And let's put an indicator on this side and see where we're at. We'll just come up here and zero that right there. And now, nothing. Wow. Okay. Let's check it on this end, make sure we haven't gone too far with our taper. And on this end, Nothing. That's about a perfect fit. Wow. I did better than I thought. So I'm real happy with that. We got a nice uh, matching taper. Um, now what I need to do is just figure out links to cut this thing off and I think we'll have us a, a, a brand new gib all ready to go. Here's the gib. Uh, I did some measuring. I cut it to length. The same length as the old gib and should have enough adjustment in here. So I'm gonna slide that in. I've already kind of fitted in there once. Got about where I felt like it needed to be. The back screw was already set. So we'll put the front screw in. Snug it up. 
Yeah, it might need to be just a tad bit tighter, but I don't know, that actually feels pretty good without any oil on it, so we can fine tune that later. But before we start fine tuning, of course, we've uh, got to get it scraped in. Not really feeling any side to side movement in here, so that tells me that we got a good taper. So hopefully that thing's gonna scrape in pretty easy, but uh, that's gonna be another video. So we'll be back on that one later on. Well, there you go, guys. One brand new Gib for the Monarch and one step closer to having this machine back up and going. Still gotta get it scraped in, but uh, with all the, the surface grinding that we did and all the nice fits that we have, that should come in very quickly. I hope. So um, anyway, that's going to be another video down the road, but that's going to be a wrap on this one. So with that, as always, thank you guys for watching. Leave me a thumbs up if you like what you see. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comments are always great. Emails are great. All those kinds of good things. And we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.